All right, welcome back to another fly tying episode with Catching Colorado. In the vise today, I have a size 12 scud hook. Um, any scud hook will do. And then I have a 760 force gold bead. And right now I am just getting some olive thread tied on here. Um, this is U UTC 140. It is the true olive color thread. And I'm gonna build up the body of this damsel nymph. Um, I was fishing Antero Reservoir recently and I saw a bunch of damsels flying around uh, mating and uh, just big be blue beautiful damsels and uh, that told me pretty much immediately that uh, a damsel nymph might be the way to go right now for uh, some of those locations so before I head back I'm gonna tie up a couple and just have them in my box uh, a little bit different than you would tie other patterns that are in this color of green um, you may have some like caddis nymphs and things like that but uh, those are not going to cut it when it comes to imitating a damsel nymph. So I have got um, a, a gold wire here that I'm going to tie into this hook. Uh, the gold wire is a UTC gold wire. It's the brassy size. I wanted to actually find smaller. So if you can, I would probably recommend getting the small. However, um, I do think that the brassy will give it a nice profile to the body and uh, we're looking for segmentation with the wire and nothing else. So this will stand out a little bit more than, um, you know, the small wire that I think uh, Brian Chan recommends. Um, so, oh, let me back that up. I'm going to fit that wire. I'm going to snake it. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on right now, so it's hard to see. I'm going to snake that wire into the bead just like so. And then I'm going to work that back all the way to the start of the bend of the hook. Um, I don't want to go too much further than that. This is not a hook or this is not a fly that goes super deep onto the hook. Um, it's more of a flat fly. And then I'm going to come back and then wrap. I'm going to wrap back down and I'm going to stop right at the back of the fly where we have the wire tied in. Then I'm going to take a piece of strung marabou. Looks like this. I'm going to cut off, I don't know, 10 or so strands of marabou. Um, so it's going to look like this. And then I'm going to bunch them together. And the goal is to kind of get the tips all going the right direction. And then I'm going to give it about a shank length of the hook uh, out the back of the fly. So I'm gonna come down just a hair more and that right there is about what we want. We've got marabou coming right off the back and then we have all of the fibers kind of hanging out the top here. And then what we're gonna do with these fibers is we're not gonna do a ton, but we are going to give it a little twist. It's gonna kind of look a little bit like a peacock curl and then first wraps I'm gonna take are gonna sort of be backwards. And then I'm going to advance my thread forward to the front of the hook. And we're gonna continue spinning this on. And I am going fairly tight here. And we're gonna spin it on all the way to the front of the hook. And then I'm gonna take my thread and I'm going to do a couple securing wraps like so and then I'm going to get my scissors in here and I'm going to chop free my excess strung marabou and then get a couple wraps behind the head and then last thing I'm going to do I'm going to kind of free up this wire from the tail section and my first wrap is going to be under so that I don't mess with all that we just did. And then I'm going to get a spin going here again. And the goal with the wire is not to lay down the marabou. The goal with the wire is just to get a segmentation. So we want that marabou to stick through. We don't want the marabou to be very flat by the time we're done with this. So 
I'm gonna roll that all the way to the front, get a nice, decent couple segments in there. And then I'm going to really secure this wire and then helicopter that wire off. So now that we've got the wire helicoptered off, we've got most of our strands in place there. We are going to take our whip finish tool and we're gonna do a four or five turn whip finish behind the eye. And then I always like to do a second whip finish of a couple turns. I think it's just a little extra security for a fly like this, tungsten bead and other things. It's just nice to make sure they aren't gonna come undone. You can fish them forever after so. So just take the time to do that extra whip finish. And that right there is pretty much all you need to catch fish on a Baby Chan's uh, damsel nymph. So great fly for late in the season. Um, there's also another hatch in the beginning of the season. Um, so spring and fall fly, but absolutely beautiful pattern. Chan's baby damsel nymph. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And uh, if you have any comments about maybe next flies you wanna see, let us know. That is your baby damsel nymph. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures.